pygmies. They're one of the smallest people in the world. This word pygmy is kind of offensive, but I will use it as it's a shorthand. Uh, people who are Khoisan used to be called pygmies as well, but I guess most people these days, when they say pygmy, they mean the dark black African populations that have existed in Central Africa and even Southern Africa for tens of thousands of years. This contradicts with West Africans and even West African pygmies who lived in West Africa and are essentially Bantu people and then traveled down to Africa displacing these pygmies. These pygmies signal something very important. They signal the diversity within humans. We have genetics from 8,000 years ago, 4,000 BC, that show that pygmies are genetically distinct from West Africans, North Africans, East Africans, though some of the DNA overlaps, obviously. But this is exactly what we're talking about when we say that they are genetically diverse. Africa is one of the most genetically diverse places in the world, that you can get people of this size with completely different genetics than those of West Africa. But through looking, some people would just look at the face and go, these two people are related. Now, if you take these people, let's say the Baka people, for example, who are not Bantus, uh, some of them have Bantu DNA today because they've been mixed with Bantus, but they're not Bantus. If you take the Baka people, for example, and what I'm saying, I hope, does not freak you out. So if we take pygmies, according to a study done by these authors, I make sure I'm not plagiarizing, I'm taking it from their study. If you take what they said, testing genetics, um, pygmies separated from other Africans 150,000 years ago to 90,000 years ago. Now, I want to make this clear to you. It means that they separated from other Africans before, before um, the East Africans left Africa and created the whole world, which is somewhere between 70,000 and uh, 50,000 years ago. So before that, these ones separated and they did not interact until the modern day and we can see this because they talk about Yoruba farmers which are basically West African farmers compared to West African uh, pygmies and you can see here that the genetics don't go together in fact it's said that the Yoruba people or the Baka people the pygmies are almost like the Khoisan in the sense that the Khoisan do not overlap with other Africans. Other Africans over overlap with them, but they do not overlap with other Africans, showing that they're an earlier um, adaption than other Africans. And Baka people are the second earliest according to this. Now, I don't want to confuse you. These people we know are still African and they diverge from the same groups because they have the haplogroup L, which is associated with Africa. This haplogroup L that's associated with Africa shows that, yes, indeed, they were one at some point, but somewhere about 150,000 years ago to 70,000 years ago, and in fact, I think closer to 70,000 years ago for the Bantu people, they separated uh, from the Bantus. There are three different types of pygmy people, and these three different types might have had nothing to do with each other, this genetic thing. So, for example, the pygmifying of them might be completely independent from the other, and some studies have suggested this, showing that uh, the pygmy DNA might have evolved more than once even 
inside Africa, even within close places. The Bakiga, which I've put on the very last one, represent a closer to East African uh, pygmy. Then the Batwa, Central African, and the other ones are West African. All of these are Southwest African and East Southwest African. So East South African. So take that into consideration. I'm going to talk about the equator, except for the Batwa, which are Central Africans. Now, considering where they live, Something very interesting is happening in the history of ancient Egypt, which is that pygmies are fascinated upon and found from foreign lands and brought into Egypt, with several pharaohs finding them very interesting to the point that they use huge funds to go find them and put high glory on their name. For example... In the autobiography of Hakuf, it talks about these pygmies and how Harkov uh, served as king in Upper Egypt and in capacity he led four expeditions to Nubia. His relations with Nubia at this time to the account of his expedition. Harkov added the text of a letter he received from the boy king Nefekare, Pepi II, in which the letter vividly and touchingly expresses his eagerness to see the dancing pygmy whom Harkov was bringing back with him. The narration of his career is preceded by the standardized elements of tomb autobiographies. Okay, so let's see. It says here, the king's own seal, year two, third month of the first season, day 15, the king's decree to sole companion, Lector priest, chief of scouts, Harkov, notice has been taken of this dispatch of yours, which you made for the king of the palace, to let one know that you have come down in safety from Yam with the army that was with you. You have said in this dispatch of yours that you have brought all kinds of great and beautiful gifts with Hathor mistress of Imau has given to the Ka of King Nefekari, who lives forever. You have said in this dispatch of yours that you have brought a pygmy of the gods' dances from the land of the horizon dwellers, like the pygmy whom the gods' seal-bearer bewarded brought from Punt, in the time of King Isesi, you have said to my majesty that his like has never been brought by anyone who did yam previously. Truly you know how to do what your lord loves and praises. Truly you spend day and night planning to do your lord loves praises and commands. His majesty will provide you your many worthy honors for the benefit of your son's son for all time, so that all people will say when they hear what you, my majesty did for you, does anything equal what was done for the sole companion Hakuf when he came down from Yam on account of the vigilance he showed in doing what his lord loved, praised, and commanded come north to the residence at once hurry and bring with you this pygmy whom you brought from the land of the horizon dwellers live hale and healthy for the dances of the god to gladden the heart to delight the heart of the king nefikari who lives forever when he goes down with you into the ship Get worthy men to be around him on deck, lest he fail into the water. When he lies down at night, get worthy twenty men to lie around him in tents. Inspect ten times at night. My majesty desires to see this pygmy more than the gifts of the mineland and of Punt. When you arrive at the 
at the residence and this pygmy is with you live hale and healthy my majesty will do great things for you more than was done for the god seal bearer rewarded in the time of king assessi in accordance with my majesty wish to see this pygmy orders have been brought to the chief of the new towns and the companion overseer of priest to command that supplies be furnished from what is under the charge of each from every story depot and every temple that has not been exempted now you can see how eager this boy king was to meet a pygmy it's kind of strange but you can tell and it's in the horizon land so he goes from nubia to yam from yam to the horizon lands meaning the lands which were the least explored or not explored at all this is somewhere in sub-saharan africa